South Park had made me into a character called Muscle Man Mark because I have two South Park characters on my arms. I mean, they made a very funny, sarcastic remark, and I can't really quote it properly, but it was just the fact that uh, something as stupid as like two of Cartman's toys tattooed on like a fashion designer, someone who's supposed to be an arbiter of taste. Anyway, they made me into a character, so that was the last thing I had tattooed. My name is Mark Jacobs. Um, I'm a fashion designer. What I do is answer questions about fashion, um, draw sometimes, sit in on fittings, choose fabrics, um, design bags and shoes, uh, spend a lot of time making corrections, uh, put shows together, travel, um, walk my dog. That's what I do. I don't know what I want to do next. I didn't know I wanted to be this next years ago, you know. I, like some people sometimes, I, I mean, I have this gym regime and I, I've taken to getting my body decorated by Scott Campbell with tattoos. And um, I do have a different attitude about fashion. I mean, for I've, I've been enjoying it all a lot. I go to the gym in the morning for two hours. Uh, I, I basically lift weights. I do some stretching once in a while, but uh, that's, that's basically what it comes down to. I, uh, I just, uh, I work out different body parts every day and uh, I do have a lot of conversation in between sets with my trainer, Easy, and um, yeah, it's not very social really, the gym, but I mean, he and I have a nice dialogue going on and have for years. Um, but I, I like to exercise, I like the way I feel uh, afterwards. It, it's a good, good way to start the day. And I start actually, I mean, I start my day way before the gym, but, but the gym is really the, I mean, more than the coffee and more than the shower, it's really the thing that wakes me up. I do wake up a couple of hours before. Sometimes I watch a little morning TV, walk the dog, have breakfast, shower, put on all kinds of lotions and potions that my facial person recommends and take vitamins that my nutritionist recommends. And I, I, take, lots of, I take lots of supplements like juices, uh, natural juices, acai, goji, noni, mangosteen, all these different things, wheatgrass, and ginger and uh, lots of vitamins and uh, acidophilus, etc. And then, yeah, then go to the gym. The job that I do today between Marc Jacobs and Vuitton, I mean, I guess I do more than I've ever done before. I mean, there's perfume now, there's a Sephora beauty line that we're doing, there's um, just a lot, a lot more stuff. So there's more traveling and there's more of everything. There's more fittings, more choosing fabrics, more uh, designing and directing shows and uh, collaborating with different people on getting everything done from shoes, to bags, to knitwear, to clothes, to advertising shoots, to yeah, all of it. In New York, I'm very close to, well, I, this is where I grew up and I'm close to my friends and I, I don't know, the familiarity of the city feels very real to me and 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 what I know, and whereas Paris, like I said, is a bit of a fantasy and a, and a fairy tale, so it always feels like I'm playing at doing the job rather than actually doing it. You know, sometimes I'm not really aware of, of how much something means to me or how important it is going forward until a lot later. It's sort of like in the end, it becomes clear all the things that played a part in, in the making of a collection, and they always do, especially in New York. I mean, I really feel like it's a, a show, when we do the show in New York, it always feels like a diary of the last six months of our lives, you know. I think the way I feel in New York is very different than the way I feel in Paris. I mean, I, I, de I, 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 I have bits of that feeling of, I guess it was funny face, where, you know, I arrive in Paris as a New Yorker, as an American New Yorker specifically, and I just sort of feel like Paris is so sort of, I don't know, mythical in a way. I, it's so romantic and it's so the way, I think it's so the way I see it, not the way it really is. So my existence there is very somehow fictional in my mind. I mean, it's funny because I have friends like Sophia, who, who's a, Sophia Coppola, who's a part-time Parisian and she and her husband and family are there quite a bit. And you know, I've had dinners over at my house and Sophia will arrive like in a fur coat and, and dressed up for dinner and you know, she'll say, oh, this is our bourgeois seventh dinner. and it. So it's not only me. I think a lot, a, a lot of Americans who do get to spend time 
in Paris, or at least a certain group of Americans, have that sort of feeling of, of Paris as what we know it from movies and what we know it through books. I, I don't know if I'd ever want it to feel any differently, to be honest. We're stuck in the studio before the show. I mean, it's, it's two weeks of kind of nonstop working, and um, I think it's almost like you can some, I don't know, there's a strange vibration that courses through your body that tells you that everybody's landed. I think when it's over, because we show on the last day, and um, I think that there's a kind of come down uh, that, I, that I feel, and again, it's probably also partially exhaustion, but there's a come down and it's, at, it's maybe in that point that Paris feels like just Paris, like the Paris of when I was a tourist, you know, or when I was a student going for the first time that it's the time that I look out the window or walk, take a walk and I just sort of feel like Paris is Paris and not the Paris of a job, the Paris of fashion or Paris of anything else. I think I use the word comfort a lot and I don't mean it in terms of how it feels necessarily but how comfortable the familiarity of something is. And I think that things that are asymmetric and abstract, although they can be interesting and certainly challenging, I don't find great comfort in them. Maybe that's what's exciting about them but for me, you know, I'm not a, I wouldn't say that what I love is like easy, easy to wear. That doesn't interest me, but, but the comfort of familiarity or the idea of classic, meaning that it's rooted in something classic, again, is that familiarity. And that's, that's I guess, an approach or something that's always in the back of my mind. You know, it's, it's sort of being able to make something believable somehow and say like, well, I can imagine someone wearing that or someone having worn something like that or, it gives it a kind of credibility in my mind and allows it, I think, for me to let it go and say, yeah, this can exist or this, this seems viable and, and right and, and also quite easy. I recently saw a picture of, of um, two, two women that I'm extremely uh, inspired by and, and like very much, and that's Rachel Feinstein and Cindy Sherman, and they were both wearing these sequin dresses, which happened to be one of the dresses I felt very strongly about in that show because I felt it was nice for us to do a long dress that wasn't a mermaid dress. And then the fact that two women I really respect and I think are creative geniuses, you know, both separately chose that dress and showed up at the same event in them. And I think those kind of things are what is most gratifying, really. I'm interested in celebrity because I'm also interested in, you know, I think the psychological side, what makes people want to perform and what makes anybody want to do a show or write a book or be recognized for the work they create. You know, I think this is, comes down to a very, I mean, what I, what I find very easy to talk about, which is this, this wanting of attention, which I think every child comes into this world wanting attention, and if it didn't get it from its mother, it would die. But I think that that desire for attention reaches certain levels, different levels in different people. And so they have this absolute passion for expressing themselves. And I think that first and foremost, it comes from their own desire to create. But that also can, is contingent on the audience because just to create isn't really all they want. They also want to show what they've created and they want a response. I, I don't think that I ever long for anonymity, but there are moments where I'm, very, where I'm at my happiest just working here. And again, it's not for the audience. It isn't that moment of the show being over and the applause or, or it isn't for the you know, seeing it on Rachel and Cindy. It is the actual, oh, it sounds really spiritual and sickly, but the journey. And there are moments where it's here and it's just us. And it's not for a video or for the camera or for anybody else. The thing is with creative people, I think, first and foremost, there's the pleasure of making. And the process of doing that and the, the journey of doing that is, is so gratifying. And then other times I just think, oh, I'm gonna have fun with this. Like when I went to the, the Prada Scaparelli thing at the Met and I decided to wear this Comme des Garçons black lace dress. And I just thought like, you know, Anna is always kind of encouraging us to get dressed up for the Met. And I thought, I thought about the, the two women that were being, you know, shown in this exhibition and how much respect and admiration I have for them. And I came to the conclusion that regardless of what the museum's point of view was about them, what I felt they shared was this fact that they were both unconventional thinkers. And, um, and so in the celebration of that, I thought, what could be more unconventional than a man in a lace dress? I'm just saying this to say that there are times where I really kind of get a like, I don't know, spring in my step and feel like, oh, I'm just gonna have a good, good time with this. Oh, I, I remember also about that particular event, Rachel Feinstein and I going up the stairs and Rachel in this huge black fox portrait hat in a May day, 
or something and sat and dressed and she said, do you know who the entertainment is? And I said, I think we are.